You scroll through breaking news, urgent updates, distant tragedies before your feet even touch the floor. And even if you barely registered it, your mind didn't miss a thing. It flagged every alert as something it might need to act on even when it can't. And science backs this up. Just 14 minutes of exposure to emotionally charged news can raise anxiety and sadness by more than 40%. Most of us are getting way more than that before breakfast. And your non-conscious mind doesn't forget anything, which means until you rewire your mind-brain-body network, those are stored. Those moments get stored long after you have moved on and they're there in the background driving you. In fact, your poor brain wasn't built for this kind of unmanaged emotional battering. It evolved to focus on what you need to survive, not the entire world's issues, all at once. But if you're just immersed in all you're exposed to without self-regulating and mind managing, you will quite literally batter and damage the brain. Think of the damage a hurricane does. Our conscious messy level of our mind tries to track everything, and that's good. But the tidy level of our conscious mind is there to guide us and make us aware we need to tap into wisdom of the non-conscious mind to make some judgments like a parent guides a toddler. Headlines, social feeds, someone else's trauma and someone else's outrage will create a hurricane in the messy mind and the equivalent in the brain and the body. That doesn't feel great at all. And then you have this hovering anxiety effect. And you wonder what's wrong with you. Nothing's wrong with you. You just got to manage your mind. Most of us are exhausted not because of what we're doing, but because of what our messy minds are forcing our brain to constantly carry. When we don't regulate our minds, we literally force our brains to carry stuff that they, don't, they can't carry. And what happens when your brain keeps absorbing crisis after crisis without any space to resolve it? Well, in this week's episode, we'll unpack how your conscious level of your mind and brain and body respond to too much input. What happens when empathy has nowhere to land And how can you begin to reset what gets through your mental door? Welcome to the Dr. Leaf Show. I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf. I'm a clinical and research neuroscientist and mental health researcher with over 40 years of experience in the field, helping people understand and heal their minds and manage their minds. On this show, We explore how your thoughts affect your brain and how your brain signals your body. Each episode gives you practical science-based tools to change your internal world one step at a time. And today we're talking about something most of us feel but really name, the cost of constant input without filtering and self-regulating. The kind that piles up even when you just check in your phone. Some mornings I wake up feeling like I've already lived through 10 headlines before I've made coffee. That's not just a feeling. It's how our systems respond to constant input. Before we dive in, take a moment with me. A de- take a deep breath in and out. We're saying think, feel, choose. If you're here, you're probably someone who thinks deeply, cares a lot, and maybe struggles to find quiet spaces in the middle of loud ones. So subscribing to this podcast gives you access to tools that don't just sound good. They meet your mind-brain-body connection where it is at in the moment. This isn't about fixing yourself. It's about learning how to listen better to what your mind, brain, and body are already trying to tell you. So if you're looking for rhythm, relief, or just somewhere to land, hit follow. Let's keep going. It's 7 a.m. You're getting ready for the day. Before you've even opened your laptop, you've already seen a headline about a school shooting. Scroll past someone's loss and watched a reel that left you feeling tight in your chest. You're not in danger, but your brain is acting like you might be because your conscious mind is stuck in the messy zone and feeding all kinds of chaos into the physical brain. Because your brain doesn't think, your mind does. And your brain just does what the mind tells it to do. And when the brain is in this state, it doesn't operate well. You're not in danger, but your brain is acting like you might be because your mind is stuck in the messy zone. You've got two parts, a tidy conscious mind and a messy conscious mind, and they work in tandem to deal with all the data coming in and organize it. When they're out of tandem, your messy mind doesn't know the difference between what's happening to you and what's happening near you. And all this this lands in your brain as chaos. And then all you know and all you feel is that something's off and you need to react. 
Maybe you're more irritable. Maybe you're more distracted or maybe feel you feel exhausted before the day has even started. That's not mood. It's physics and it's biology. Your brain has already logged multiple alerts because your conscious mind has gone all messy and your body's just following the lead. Your non-conscious mind is saying, hey, 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 slow down. It runs thousands of mental filters in the background and it's trying to help us, but we have to pause to hear the help. The more emotional noise you take in, the harder it becomes for you to actually hear the filters that the non-conscious mind is trying to give you to guide you. And this is what I call thought clutter. Too many mental branches with nowhere to go. Okay, so let's now talk about what's actually happening in your mind-brain-body network when you absorb more than you can process your amygdala, which is like a threat detection system. Like books give us knowledge, the amygdala gives us perceptual knowledge. And when you are in a threatened state, you get a lot more activation there. You get more blood flow, more energy flowing there. So not just when it's in immediate danger, but whenever something might be important, the amygdala fires up in this way. The more frequently you're exposed to stress signals that you don't manage, and stressful sounds and images and emotionally charged language, the more your amygdala starts tagging those moments as relevant, like choosing a specific type of library book. The book gets moved right to the front of the library, like on display. So you don't see anything else, you just see the scary ones. Your conscious mind uses your prefrontal cortex to help, which is here, to help you pause and assess. That's the structure of the prefrontal cortex and your mind uses it to do that. But your brain gets tired, and when it does, your filters weaken, and then the fog sets in. This is where ambient stress starts to build. You're not in danger, but your system is responding like you could be. We can only get that sort of sorted out when our conscious mind works in tandem with the non-conscious. And the input doesn't stop at the brain, guys. It goes into your body as well. Remember, your brain is the messenger. Your body is the responder. So it's mind to body. Your mind literally lives through the nervous system in your brain and your body. The signals travel through your nervous system and affect digestion, breathing, hormone balance, and even your immune function. Stress isn't just a feeling. It's a full body experience. This is psychoneurobiology in action. What's even more important is how this input reshapes your brain over time. Our mind literally changes the brain and the body, which is what neuroplasticity is all about. So the way you use your mind, the way you respond to inputs, that is going in your brain and changing your brain and your body. When your thoughts repeat, this reinforces what was built in the brain because whatever you think about the most will grow. That's neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity, your mind's ability to rewire your brain or to wire things into your brain. And it's based on what you keep on repeating, what you keep thinking about, what you keep telling yourself. Thoughts don't just pass through. They leave a physical trail. They leave a physical imprint. And if you constantly panic, it builds pathways that prioritize panic and fear. So thoughts don't just pass through. They leave a physical trail via networks in your brain and your body. So if you constantly feed it panic, it builds pathways that prioritize panic. If you feed its presence, it will just get stronger. We call that attentional bias. Logic, what you pay attention to is going to grow. What you think about the most will grow. That's what attentional bias is. And then your brain's more likely to notice what it's been trained to expect. So it's wired in, the spotlight's on it, and that's what activates. If it's messy and not being guided by your wise and unconscious mind, you're going to build that in your brain, and then your body will live this out. There's a common belief that staying constantly plugged in somehow makes us more responsible, more empathic, and more aware. And in small doses, that could be a little bit true. Awareness does matter. I used to keep every news alert turned on thinking I was being responsible and all I did was leave me jittery and distracted before noon or before breakfast. But there's a tipping point where awareness turns into saturation and this is what you've got to look for. And that tipping point happens faster than most people actually realize. And your non-conscious mind is warning you about this. So when we take those pauses and we listen to the non-conscious, it's going to tell our messy mind to listen to the tidy mind and it's going to tidy things up. But we don't always hear that. And I hear people telling me all the time things like, I need to stay informed. Here's the thing. Your brain doesn't think. It doesn't distinguish between informed and activated. When you're exposed to toxic stress-related content over and over and over again, 
your brain is being battered by your mind. Your brain just stores what your mind puts into it. So if you just think in one way, you become one way. And this type of chaotic energy is rewiring your brain and putting it into threat exposure mode. This type of chaotic energy landing in the brain puts it into threat exposure mode. Not just information, but possible danger. And it's not distinguishing. Chronic exposure recruits your stress systems in a toxic way, and that changes how you perceive the world and changes positive stress into toxic stress. Your default state becomes one of watchfulness and hyperarousal, hovering anxiety, even if nothing around you requires it. And if that's what you constantly think about, that's what grows. So we are learning that this overload doesn't make us better citizens. It makes us less able to act in a wise way and compassionate way. Constant input can shrink your capacity to respond well because you block access to the wisdom of your unconscious mind. And especially when that input makes you feel helpless and that rewires your brain, damages your brain. The result, you'll feel tension, mental fog or frustration that lingers even when nothing specific is wrong. It can be fixed. It can be rewired. Your brain can always be rewired. This is where the science of psychoneurobiology really matters. Psychoneurobiology, mind, brain, body connection. When your brain is placed into a state of sustained vigilance, your immune system becomes less efficient. Your sleep becomes lighter and your digestion is affected. This isn't dysfunction. It's your brain adapting to the patterns it's been repeatedly exposed to. It's just trying to cope. But that's not going to help you. It's going to make you feel worse. So... Let's talk for a moment about a simple practical shift you can start trying. Something small enough to implement today, but powerful enough to just start rewiring your patterns over time. It does take 63 days to rewire habits, but you've got to start somewhere. And that's what we're going to talk about now. So the little thing you can do is called interoceptive anchoring. Interoception is your brain's ability to track what's happening inside of your body. And your mind is guiding that process. Your breath, your heartbeat, your posture, your temperature. When you bring your focus to those signals, you help your brain get into a healthier state. You help your messy mind redirect energy away from the external chaos and back towards internal clarity, calms your down your neurophysiology, and you can tune into the tidy conscious mind and the wise non-conscious mind. Here's how it works. When you notice yourself scrolling or absorbing too much, pause. Feel your feet against the floor. Place one hand on your chest or your ribs. Breathe in for four, hold for four, exhale for six. Ask yourself, what's the one thing I can release from my mental load right now? Name what feels heaviest. You don't have to solve it at that moment. Just recognize it with no judgment. It's okay, it's not you. It's just how you're feeling in that moment. No guilt. No judgment. This mind practice recruits your prefrontal cortex in under 60 seconds. And that's the area that is activated when we deliberately think and self-regulate in the way that I'm talking about. At the same time, this calms down that amygdala, that library, puts those books back on the shelf and reduces signals that trigger unnecessary hypervigilance. Interestingly enough, in a 2019 study, researchers found that even two minutes of focused interoceptive attention, like I've just described, lowered subjective stress ratings by over 30%. That's not meditation. That's simply coming back into your body. This isn't avoidance. It's an intentional way to give your brain a chance to reset and recover. Now you're standing in your kitchen and you can't remember what you came here for. You rub your forehead and you take a breath, but the weight didn't go away. It just moved locations. That blank moment, that fog, is your brain conserving energy after processing more that it could fully handle. Your body's trying to finish a stress cycle that never actually had an end. It was just open-ended. That's where stress turns into toxic stress. Stress is good for you, but if it's open-ended and not managed, it turns into toxic stress. So the pause is a signal. Your system is asking for time to process, not punishment. So your conscious mind and your brain need that time. We started with a familiar experience, waking up already tired, already flooded, already stretched. This is something people write to me about when at conferences. We also walk through what happens when your brain absorbs input without resolution, which is not great, and your conscious mind. And I'll be honest, there are days when I still catch myself trying to just push through. But the data tells us a different story, guys. 
We talked about the role of how your amygdala, which is like a perceptual library, your prefrontal cortex, which is over here, your amygdala is like deep down behind your eyes, and your nervous system collectively respond to your mind and how your mind sets the pace for what your body feels and what your brain feels. This kind of input fatigue doesn't always show up as panic. It often shows up as brain fog, memory slips, irritability, big emotions, or emotional flatness. These patterns are biological outcomes, the result of excess input without enough time to process, without self-regulation. When you build in micro-boundaries, tiny shifts in awareness and attention, you are self-regulating, and you begin to create room again. Room for clarity, for presence, for decision-making. And then your brain and body can work better. Adjusting your thought patterns reshapes the way your brain and body interact over time. Listening is a labor, and your nervous system notices when you pause to do it. You don't need perfect conditions or flawless routines, just moments like this where you reconnect, recalibrate, and decide what truly actually needs your attention in this moment. If this episode helped give shape to something you've been feeling, make sure you follow this show. You can always come back when it gets loud again. And if you're in a season where everything feels loud right now, Help in a Hurry is for you. I wrote it for me, but I'll share it with you. It's my new book, rooted in neuroscience and written for the moments when life throws more at you than you know how to carry. It's out August 5th. The pre-orders are open now and they come with over $900 in exclusive bonuses. Just head to helpinahurrybook.com to grab yours. Until next time, stay observant. Be gentle with the mental effort it takes to stay aware. That effort really does mean something.